every day, more and more road users are filming their journeys, which can often end in disaster. Pioneered by motorists in Russia and Eastern Europe, dashboard mounted cameras are constantly recording our behavior on the roads. From the bizarre to the ridiculous, the funny to the downright dangerous. The thousands and thousands of dash cams around the world have captured just about every mishap you can think of. Now we're going to delve into this treasure trove of stupidity on the roads. Put things right by pointing the finger of blame. Replay the action to see what really happened. And of course, there's nothing like seeing other people's mistakes when it comes to helping us become better drivers. And please remember on all the clips, yes, that's all the clips we show, no one, and that means no one is seriously hurt. So drive safely, not everyone is this lucky. Coming up, delusional driving from Russia and Eastern Europe that had it happened in Britain would have resulted in the following contraventions of the highway code. Article 160, subclause D, be aware of other road users. Article 202, look carefully before you start reversing. And Article 162, make sure the road ahead is clear before you start to overtake. There's nothing more frustrating than being stuck behind a Sunday driver. Standard procedure is to wait for an appropriate opportunity to overtake. But in some parts of the world, motorists employ other techniques. The clips that follow demonstrate the trouble with undertaking. First, here's how not to undertake. Just about everything is wrong here. The road is running out and you're trying to cut up a belligerent tanker. A total tanker, if you ask me. If you plan to undertake a stationary vehicle, ask yourself this. Why did the car stop in the first place? Yes, undertakers are a selfish lot. If there's one thing they don't like, it's other people stealing their thunder. It only ever ends in tears. Undertaking on a bike is a terrible idea. Stand by for a close shave. Yes, he was so close, he shaved that guy's bumper off. Idiot. Only inexperienced fools undertake. You'd never find, say, a minicab driver doing it. Hold on. Is that a taxi? Not anymore, it isn't. Undertaking is a risk. How do you know nobody will do this to you? <laughs> He's never going to get to the Saima market before it closes now. If you're ever tempted to undertake, just be careful who you do it to. Some people don't like giving up their precious place in the flow of traffic. That people carrier has cut that taxi right up. But taxi is having none of it. Order has been restored. Hold on. That's not the end of it. The people carrier has another go. How is this going to end? Well, it looks like we will never find out because we're on board with Lewis Hamilton, who's decided to leave everyone else for dust. When will this lot learn? For some people, the thrill of the open road is the best thing about driving. Not for me. I prefer a nice, intricate junction. They're like some kind of giant obstacle course, but with cars. And danger. And so here are some of the most shocking examples we could find of incorrect intersections. For some reason, people just forget themselves at junctions. The driver you're about to see on the left thinks it's the weekend and he's out winding through traffic on his motorbike. Unfortunately, it's Tuesday and he's at work driving his lorry. When approaching junctions, always look out for people breaking the rules. Like the driver of that car, who is just looking for trouble. When crossing an intersection, watch out for powerful vehicles coming out of nowhere. 
I think the driver of that minibus must have accidentally used the turbo feature it so proudly advertises. You've heard of Superman. You've heard of Wonder Woman. Now for Magnificent Mog, the most courageous cat in town. Watch again as she narrowly dodges disaster. Never mind the pileup she's just caused at the junction. That is one clever kitty. This next clip sums up how dangerous incorrect junction etiquette can be for motorcyclists. Prepare to be shocked. The most amazing thing here is that this lucky biker has no more than a limp. He did lose his shoe, though. Oh, and his bike. Yes, intersections are dangerous places for bikers, especially ones who aren't interested in waiting for a safe moment to proceed. That guy learned the hard way. That's another painful-looking limp. And a severely bruised ego. If you find yourself in the wrong lane at a junction, here's an example of the worst thing you can possibly do. I'm speechless. The key to junctions is paying attention. This trucker didn't notice the car in front waiting to turn left. Fortunately, the white saloon was spared. The poor larder, on the other hand, oh dear. And finally, we've established in previous episodes that white larders are trouble magnets. And lo and behold... Now, I know we warned you to give them a wide berth, but we didn't mean drive along the pavement through a puddle and into a street light. Come on, people. Next, it's your opportunity to demonstrate you've got the knowledge to be a responsible road user. Where there's blame, there's a claim. Yes, it's your favourite and mine, the blame game. A busy junction. There's about to be a meeting of minds. Yes, the driver in the blue saloon ignores all guidelines by failing to turn when safe to do so. To blame! That's right, it's obviously this hatchback driver who should be aware of other road users, as Rule 160, Subsection D of the Highway Code suggests. One very slow van and one very fast car. All too easy. The van clearly did not check his mirrors. And finally... Yes, the Silver Saloon is the villain here. That's why the Highway Code tells us to wait for a safe gap between you and any oncoming vehicle. Article 180, one of my favourites. That's it. If you got full marks, give yourself a nice big pat on the back, champ. When I was at school, one of the first lessons I learned was never pick on anyone bigger than you. As an adult, that rule still applies, and never more so than on the roads. And here's why you should steer clear of the big boys of the highway. These next clips are examples of trucking hell. When driving a massive heavy truck, it can be hard to keep all the wheels on the road, especially when you haven't bolted them on properly. Looks like that tire wanted to go straight on. Sometimes, the problem is less the truck itself and more the driver. This guy must be really late for his dinner. It must be something special to cause that. Flatbeds give me the heebie-jeebies. I have this irrational fear that one will hurl a giant ten-pence piece at me. Ah! There it is! A real-life nightmare on Main Street! Hmm, low visibility. Probably caused by a huge truck up ahead creating spray. If in doubt, slow right down. Or that happens. Have you ever been on board a truck when it jackknifes? You have now. Thank goodness nobody else got involved in that little fiasco. Trucks can be like naughty children. When they don't want to do something, they'll just refuse point blank. No, I won't turn that corner. You can't make me. Or sometimes they're like predators. This big dumper looks hungry. 
watch as he lulls his prey into a false sense of security before pouncing. Time for lunch. Yes, they come in all shapes and sizes, and some even have secret gadgets that can get rid of unwanted traffic. The Batmobile eats your heart out. Consider the snowplow driver who sits day in, day out in freezing conditions with no radio or heating. If you saw a cosy-looking Audi with heated seats, you'd do the same. But the fact is that snowplows should be solving people's problems, not causing them. That's another commute to work brought to an abrupt end. I suppose the moral of the story is, when it comes to taking on the truckers, the average car owner will never, ever come out on top. I'll give that banker respect for trying, though. Coming up after the break, more poor quality control and some stinking awful decision-making. Plus, we reveal what happens next in this scenario. Honestly, you will not believe the outcome. I'll reveal the answer after the break. Welcome back to Car Crash TV, the show that teaches you how to drive well by not following other people's bad examples. Before the break, I asked if you could work out what happened next. The answer is... That's right. There's an unexpected power cut over Eastern Europe thanks to one errant driver. Explosive results, my friend. In the animal kingdom, the number one rule is eat or be eaten. It's a bit like that on the highways. And the greediest beast on the road, not to mention the most annoying, is the road hog. A road hog is a driver with really bad manners, like this guy. Watch out, world, I'm coming through. They care not for simple things like the rules of the road or your safety. They just want to get where they're going as quickly as possible. And they don't mind who they inconvenience. This little piggy went to market. This little piggy stayed at home. And this little piggy took out a perfectly innocent white hatchback before plowing headlong into a field. Old MacDonald won't be happy about that. Sorry, wrong nursery rhyme. Well, I never. It's a roadhog driving a larder. Surely not. I apologize to Lada. I'm sure this must be coincidence. But anyway, we now have ourselves a full-on speed chase, in so much as one can have a speed chase with a Lada. Sorry, Lada. And finally, well, some might say that that was justice served. Never mind the roads. This hog wants the whole bridge to himself. But just look at that view. Every cloud. Next, it's the definition of a road hog. Look at him, not moving an inch. The dirty trotter. Yes, road hogs are an egotistical bunch. They especially hate other people in identical cars. It takes away their limelight, you see. And finally, bad road manners are one thing, but this is ridiculous. Talk about David versus Goliath. The little piglet never stood a chance against the giant boar. Road users come in all shapes and sizes. Big, small, and pedestrian. Yes, pedestrians are road users too. Although some fools seem to forget this. Please now, turn your attention to pedestrian crossings. I wonder where this first clip is. Somewhere snowy, that's for sure. And in these conditions, you need to give yourself a long stopping distance. <laughs> oh, that was close. At least the mystery of where this was filmed has been solved. <laughs> it's Liverpool. When approaching a junction where pedestrians are likely to be crossing, it's advisable to keep your vehicle under control, especially if it weighs over 10 tons. And off he goes. Nothing to see here. 
If this chap had been distracted by those attractive women, this pedestrian crossing could have been a pedestrian squashing. Notice the drivers. Do not irk the pedestrian, for they are known to act unpredictably. That really is a pedestrian crossing. Even when there are no pedestrians in sight, some people are just great at making them appear. And voila! Here is one in a matching blue hat and coat combo, complemented with a bright red face. I don't think that pedestrians mind sharing their crossings with other road users. But it seemed like that appalling driver had a problem with it. That's why in Britain, Article 59 of the Highway Code tells cyclists to wear a helmet. To be fair to this driver, the last thing he expected to see on a three-lane motorway at night is a little old lady calmly crossing. Well, there she is. And that's another of her nine lives gone. I wonder how many she'll use up crossing the other three lanes. Despite the wintry conditions, this nonchalant pedestrian is about to demonstrate nerves of steel and a little fancy footwork. And let's have another look at what a cool customer that guy is. Wonderful technique. He should have been a ballerina. And this next crosser of the road has decided to adopt the I can outrun a car approach. Phew, he's fine. And it didn't even knock the cigarette out of his mouth. Smoking kills, my friend. Three vehicles smashing into each other yards from where you're standing is pretty terrifying. But this woman isn't interested. It's just another day on the roads. She just continues on her way. Lots of pedestrians here. Fortunately, everyone is taking it easy. Apart from that lunatic. It looks like some motorists just have it in for those who go by foot. What a fool. If you ever find yourself crossing the road in Russia, remember that calamity is always inches away. Well, a foot in that case. Finally, this truck driver is going slow enough to avoid those school kids, but not slow enough to keep his cargo in one piece. Next time, cut your speed! Now he's flipped his lid. Public transport. Millions of us rely on it. But it seems that for some, buses and trams are the cause of pure road frustration. These next clips demonstrate the pedals of public transport. One electric bus that's broken down, and another holding up the traffic, when all you want to do is get to work. So you look for an alternative route. But that is the definition of a wrong turn. There are several ways in which to catch the bus. This isn't one of them. What you and I know, but what the driver of this 4x4 clearly doesn't, is that there was only ever going to be one winner of this clash. And when that happens, sometimes it's better to take the next turning and get out of there. Bye. See that big electric bus over there? He didn't. After a hard day of driving people around in a big, heavy bus, sometimes you just want to cut loose a little. I'm not sure this is the definition of a good public service. I hope those travel-sick passengers get a refund. When will this joyride reach its inevitable conclusion? When he gets to the bus stop, of course. Have you heard about those new buses? You know, the ones that can vanish into thin air. Ooh, look! Here's one now! It's completely gone! That's magic! You know the feeling. You've been waiting for an hour. You see the bus coming. You get ready to climb on board. It smashes into a car. Don't worry. There'll be another one along in an hour. I wonder if it's this driver's birthday, because he's about to get a big surprise. 
trams, eh? And when a one-ton minivan tries to take on a 25-ton tram, there's only going to be one winner. It's science. Here's another clip of an electric bus. This time, with an exploding tire. What a wonderfully rare occurrence. And finally, coach drivers are always picking up passengers. But that's a pretty heady way to go about it. In the UK, that would be a clear violation of Article 193 of the Highway Code. And that woman's personal space. And so we come to the end of another episode of Car Crash TV. All that remains is for us to crown the Driver of the Week. In fifth place, the Angry Kicker. In fourth, this guy with a newly crumpled bonnet. Jointly picking up the bronze medal, Lewis Hamilton and friends. Surely life's too short, fellas. Second is the Hungry Dumper. And there can only be one winner. For their lightning-fast reactions, our driver of the week is this guy who narrowly avoids hitting this little old deer as she crosses a motorway. The award for death-defying luck goes to her. Congratulations to both of you! Next time on Car Crash TV, explosive action. Don't worry, they got out fine. Stupid spinning! And balmy bin busting. Until then, keep safe on the roads. Not everyone is as lucky as this lot. <laughs> 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 <laughs>